For this passage, let's try to do this one the way you might under time pressure in the actual test. So instead of me summarizing everything that I would like to summarize for you about it, let's assume that you're really in a hurry and you just want to start. So you would skin the beginning and just glance at the figure and then start. So the beginning would tell you that there are these salts, solutes, and they get dissolved into a solvent, in this case, water. Now there's a maximum, so we can put in some salts and it just gets dissolved into the water, and then we can add more and it just gets dissolved into the water, but at some point, nothing more gets dissolved, so we add more and it just drops to the bottom. So figure one shows the maximum salts that you can add to 100 grams of water before that limit is reached. And it varies across temperature, so warmer water can dissolve more salt. So if we look, for instance, at figure one and we isolate this particular salt, you can see that at this temperature, there would be more salt in the water than the water could hold, so all this would kind of rain down and just fall to the bottom of the beaker. But if we warm that up and we put the same amount of salt in at the, in the warmer water, we can see that the water can easily handle the salt and dissolve all of it. All right, so let's get started. So number two, if figure one showed the y-axis label to be solubility in grams of salt in 500 grams of water, what would be the effect on the amount of solute that can dissolve? So basically, when we're looking at the graph, we have to understand it has units. And so the units here are the grams of salt relative to some amount of water, and we have to pick a certain amount of water. Because obviously, if we have twice as much water, we can dissolve twice as much salt. So if we're talking about how much can the water take at 100 grams, that's our baseline. That's what we're looking at in this chart. The question says, well, if the chart instead said 500 grams instead of 100 grams here, then we know we would be able to put in five times the amount of solute and still get the same results. So the best answer is B. We increase the amount of water by five, we can increase the amount of solutes that come in by five. Number three, at approximately what temperature does the solubility of potassium chlorate, KClO3, match the solubility of sodium chloride, which is table salt, NaCl. And this is the best answer, C, 83 degrees, because we see this line here and this line here, and they meet right there, and we can go down and see that at 83 degrees, both of these salts have the same solubility.